Aloha and welcome to Reg Baker Business in Hawaii. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the downtown studios of ThinkTech Hawaii and Pioneer Plaza. We are a show that highlights success in Hawaii of businesses and individuals and organizations that support businesses. Today we're going to talk a little bit with the uh, Military Transition Council, it's called Master C. Uh, they've been guests here before. This is a returning uh, event for them. So I just want to welcome uh, both Craig and Chase back to the show. Good to have you here. Thanks for having us, Reg. Uh, great to be back on the show again, and uh, we're excited to provide you with some updates. All right, very good. Well, and there's been a lot going on. You guys have been awful busy for the last six months. Can you uh, give us a little bit of an update on what you've been up to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the uh, the biggest uh, milestone that we achieved uh, since the last time we spoke uh, was actually um, we're now a registered 501c3 corporation, a nonprofit organization here in the state of Hawaii. Um, our uh, mission, uh, I think we've, um, you know, finally uh, sharpened our knife right. a little bit. And, um, you know, we've come to a realization that our organization is now going to be, um, you know, focusing on employment services, um, on uh, community engagement uh, and enrichment, and also crisis management. So those are the three uh, prongs of our business. We've learned and, a lot of lessons, yeah. And, and this is related to military in Hawaii and how to make it more comfortable for them here and maybe even help with the transition into the community. That's right. So we're absolutely focused on military transition population, whether they're new on island and they've never been to Hawaii and they really want to engage and integrate, or whether they're looking to end their military career here and they're a military family looking to uh, call Hawaii home. Very good. And, you know, we talked a little bit about this in the, the show a few months ago, uh, but we've got here in Hawaii a very low retention rate for military transitioning out into the civilian employment. Um, can you kind of refresh us a little bit on what that rate is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the current transition rate in Hawaii, or the retention rate of veterans that have um, made the, uh, the termination of their service, is at 3%. Um, comparatively, if we look at the mainland, we actually see about a 33% a retention rate um, at other military locations. Big difference. A uh, huge difference. Um, yeah, and the things we just touched on last time we were here, Reg, were uh, the economic impacts. As you know, the GI Bill is $112,000 over 36 months. The VA home loan is in the mid $500,000 range. Um, we've, through some of our economic modeling, been able to share with the state that every veteran, not even including his family, is up to $144,000 total economic commerce created annually. So there's, it's a compounded benefit with more veterans staying in Hawaii. Of course, and you take the, the, the individuals that come out and you add these dollars up on a, on a family basis. I mean, it starts piling up pretty quick. Absolutely. The value, yeah. You know, our company is uh, looking to actually increase that retention rate, um, you know, to from 3%. Uh, or, you know, we want to get it to about 10% annually. Um, you know, part of our efforts in doing that is, um, you know, showing that, you know, Hawaii is a place that is uh, that can provide a sustainable living for veterans after transition. Yeah. Up front, Reg, we understand not everyone's meant to stay in Hawaii. There are certain folks that uh, probably can't make it or that aren't interested in it. But uh, there's a lot of people, and we've talked to classrooms and classrooms times 100 now, of folks that say they wish they could, they just don't think it's possible. Well, they don't know how to start. They don't know yeah. where to begin. You know, they they in some cases have a kind of an isolated living style while they're in the military, and now all of a sudden they're going to start transitioning out. There are certain things that they need to be doing to kind of get comfortable with that process to integrate into the community. You know, for sure. And uh, part of the process that is already fa uh, federally mandated right now is the Transition Assistance Program, or, or TAP as it's known. Uh, that program offers uh, essentially a, a shotgun amount of resources. Um, you know, it, it, as soon as you approach the program, uh, they basically give you about a uh, five-day intensive uh, workshop that by the time you get done, uh, you know, it, it's usually meant to get you back to your home of record. So it's not really meant to retain you in state, but you have enough resources where you can uh, make do until uh, the transition happens. The difference here uh, with Master C is that we provide um, state-specific resources. Uh, so if someone were to come to our organization, instead of being uh, told that there's no opportunity in Hawaii, we're telling them that the opportunity is here for them to, to grab. Right, and the, the know-how really isn't there, and some of the things that are really practical and necessary 
uh, aren't being taught to these veterans. I talked to two different uh, gentlemen yesterday. One's GI Bill age population, young 20s, wants to get out and go to UH, but he's in the barracks. He shops on post for his groceries and doesn't, hasn't joined any civic organizations or volunteer organizations on the outside. Another gentleman, 20 years his senior, has a family. Again, they live on post, even though they own a house from a previous duty assignment here. And the kids play sports on post, and they haven't really integrated yet. And I, we had a frank conversation that said, if you really want to become a member of this community, one, you need to know how much a gallon of milk is at Foodland. Two, you need to think about joining Rotary, joining the Chamber of Commerce, and really getting immersed in what the needs are here. Right. You know, it, what's uh, very interesting to me is that you know the, these individuals are very talented. They've they've been trained. They've got a good work ethic. Um, they're trainable. They can learn. Um, and yet, we're not tapping into that here in Hawaii to take advantage of that, even with our unemployment as low as it is. You know, and um, the term has been used uh, pretty collectively amongst uh, the transition community. It's called the uh, the brain drain. Um, you know, the military is investing all these dollars into these you know highly trained individuals. You know, whether it be officer enlisted, and um, we're just letting them walk away. Um, you know, from Hawaii, that is. And just to, to supplement that, Craig, you know, we're in the gym, whether it's on the Marine Corps base or on Schofield. You can't look up at the TV, but every five minutes, and there's a, I'm not even going to say the website, but you know, a, a state, states like Florida and Texas are trying to recruit veterans because they understand the, the value and mm. uh, all the corollaries. So they're aggressively going after them. That's right. Yeah, and you know, for, for us here in Hawaii, with our unemployment so low and needing, it's so hard to find good people, and a lot of companies need those individuals. Uh, we seem to have a very large inventory of those available to us. We just need to learn how to reach up and, and get them. The populations don't talk. It's one of the things that we decided to do something about, but it's almost a phenomena. There's the military spouses, and then there are the service members mm -hmm. that think there's some sort of chasm in between them and, and downtown in Honolulu. But then the same thing is uh, the HR managers are talking about the ones we've spoken with. We're at 70% capacity. There's 3% unemployment. We need skills, and we're here to really try to connect those bodies. So now with that being said, what are you doing to help connect the employers with the potential employees? So uh, over the past uh, six months, uh, we've been running a pretty aggressive guerrilla campaign, um, going out, speaking with different um, uh, influencers in the community, uh, employers, uh, private industry, and, uh, and, uh, and in uh, the government as well. And uh, we've been connecting them uh, with uh, the resources that are available, uh, not only in um, you know the veteran population, but also within other um, with other organizations that might provide similar resources. Yeah. So we've had a three-pronged approach, Reg, and we had a lot of pie-in-the-sky ideas and still legitimate needs last time we spoke. But we've had to pivot and focus down on some things. The first is um, our, our crisis coordination and our like our red alert services. Uh, and we can go into that if you'd like. The second is uh, really capitalizing on the programs the military is already trying to do for transitioning veterans and make it happen here in Hawaii. DOD Skill Bridge is one of those big ones that we're really helping with businesses. And the third is just straight up veteran employment and spouse employment, whether it's um, a teacher in the, the DOE that they need a substitute or whether it's a uh, a secretary or nurse in the healthcare industry. Well, let's let's talk for a second about that uh, the bridge that okay. you mentioned. Um, I was fascinated. It, it seems like it's it's a really great opportunity for some companies to actually try it out and see how the veteran works, and and if they like them, they can keep them. If if not, then they can move on. Explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got two companies right now that are in the process of this, and have already started to take on um, two service members. And the pro the the program is uh, the military, depending on your service. Um, are there different levels of development, but uh, will pay up to six months of your. Uh, last paycheck really as you exit your term of service while you go in and work in industry. So Blue Startups and Man Mortgage, they've already taken in some folks that are still being paid by the military, but they're working full time as an intern unpaid, right? So for Hawaiian businesses, there's this huge opportunity that's not being tapped right now. You can have uh, a highly skilled, highly trainable service member 
for up to six months before they enter the job market. And that's what we're really trying to use as uh, that pathway. See, that to me is a, a past employer. I would look at that as an opportunity to bring somebody on board and get six months of time to train them and orientate them to my business and the way I operate, and it won't cost me a penny. You know, and it's uh, great for the veteran on the other side as well. You know, they get some experience in industry, which is um, something that I think uh, is a hurdle for most veterans when they come out. You know, the uh, employer general will say that, you know, you only had experience in the military, you had no civilian experience. Mm -hmm. So one thing for them is that it gives them an opportunity to get uh, a six-month, you know, familiarization yeah. with, um, you know, a company they might be in, uh, interested in or an industry they're interested in. Yeah, no, I've encountered that myself when I transitioned out many years ago, uh, and that was a big obstacle. Is it okay? Great, maybe you flourished and did well in the military, but you don't know how to transition into a civilian. Exactly. You know, um, and having that six months experience can pretty much address that. Absolutely. It gives the veteran confidence too, and it gives some time for the family uh, to really understand what it's like not showing up to point. workout formation in the morning, but to make sure that they have a whole different set of expectations and responsibilities and really in a, in a different culture. And so that gives them that adjustment period as well. Very good. If somebody wanted to find out more information on that bridge program, how could they go about getting that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a donation website that we'd love for anybody to come in and visit, as well as um, outreach on our Facebook or our LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Craig, I mean, that's, uh, he's our big outreach and, and guy there. So they right. would go to your website, and then you know, that um, bridge program where an employer can actually hire somebody and bring them on board. There would be more information on your website about yep, that? Yep, absolutely. When, um, when they want to, uh, when it's an employer looking to take on an intern, uh, they can go onto our website and they can um, just put in an application to say, hey, I'm looking for, you know, um, you know potential uh, veteran to, um, you know, augment our services or just come in and, you know, uh, just uh, get a feel for the market. Um, you know, so they can do that through our website, which we'll have posted uh, at the end of the video. Um, and what uh, Chase was talking about with the uh, donor site, um, you know, anything that uh, anyone can provide to help us along with this program or make it more prolific, then uh, they can donate to our program sure. as well. Well, if I was an employer and I was going to be getting six months of, of labor that I could help train somebody and get them ready to, to go full time with me, I wouldn't mind kicking in a few hundred dollars to cover some of the cost of that. Well, we'll hold you to that. Then. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> uh, and yeah, you know, every service has different benefits and bonuses. The Air Force, I know, will contribute up to five thousand dollars for a service member uh, to get certification in that last six months, even year period before transition. So, if there are more technical jobs, I know there are in Hawaii. Um, well, then the veterans have a uh, a fund for that. Right. So it's it's it's. Able to be grabbed, yeah. No, that's great. And, and I think it would behoove, I guess, all employers, if they're having a hard time finding qualified individuals to work for, and they should at least explore this option and see if there's something there that might work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, if uh, at the end of their term uh, with the CSP program, uh, when they're looking to transition out of the community, the, out into the community, it's an opportunity for them to potentially uh, find employment right out the gate. So yeah. it's a good transitional program. That's very good. Um, we're going to have to take a short break. Um, we're going to be back in about 60 seconds. Uh, and we're going to continue the conversation here about the, the military retention and, and what some of the value is by having a, a higher retainage rate in Hawaii for our veterans as they uh, transition into civilian life. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii, and we'll be back in about 60 seconds. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to that dog banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Foundation for a better life. 
Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about things of interest to those of us who live here and my Past blogs can be found at KauiLucas.com. Okay, I didn't listen. Aloha, and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today talking about the military transition and what we can do to increase retainage and take a value of some of the very valuable resources that are available uh, through the, the military and the veterans that are coming out. Uh, we've got a very low unemployment rate here in Hawaii. I hear all the time from businesses having a difficult time trying to hire good, quality, trainable individuals. Well, we've got a huge untapped inventory of exactly those types of people uh, available to us as they transition out of active duty into civilian life here in Hawaii. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about that. Um, we talked a little bit about the red flag program that uh, is there to help people in need. Uh, can someone explain a little bit more yeah, about it's, that? Yeah, it's actually, the, the, uh, we, we call it REACT. Uh, it's an acronym for Red Alert Crisis Team. Red Alert. Okay. Uh, and uh, the purpose behind the program is to uh, prevent people from falling into um, you know, those precarious patterns where they either find themselves in underemployment, unemployment, uh, financial crisis, housing crisis. Uh, you know, the, the typical issues that face uh, veterans upon transition. Um, so what, what our program is centered around is mitigating those risks or finding ways to completely alleviate, alleviate those risks. Uh, for those veterans. Um, so, yeah, yeah, sorry to cut in there, but um, because there are so many different veteran organizations already on the island, there are a lot of people that get in these precarious situations, they get a uh, eviction notice, right? And the organization they know of doesn't quite help them in that scenario, it can only help them part of the way. So in the last couple of weeks, we've received uh, handfuls of folks that have been res recommended by other service organizations, and we go into that red alert mode where we're calling a host of our partners, and we're saying, hey, can you help with utilities? Hey, can you help with a, the transportation or, or daycare? Yeah, our, our program isn't centered around creating any more red tape than there already is. Yeah. Uh, what we want to do is uh, serve as the hub where we recommend out to these other resources that already exist. That way, you know, they're not falling into a category where they don't understand what we're doing. Right. But we're getting them to the right resources. Well, and in a sense, and what I'm hearing is that, you know, and we've always heard these horror stories about how the vets are homeless and all this kind of stuff. But this type of program actually helps address some of that and keeps them, you know, from being on the street, keeps them in a, in a place, uh, in a, some shelter and, and security that allows them to continue to work and take care of their families. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, part of it isn't just to get them into, you know, into housing where they're going to remain. It's about, you know, the follow on with it as well. Um, you know, what do we do after we get them set up, you know, from their immediate issue? We want to make sure that they're self-sustaining uh, for the long run. Uh, I want to highlight one program that is actually vocational rehab. It's something that the VA offers that is uh, massively underutilized. Um, you know, it, it provides a, a basic BAH, uh, and it also gets them trained in a, some sort of industry to rebrand themselves, to get themselves back out there and working again. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's... What, what kind of training is this? Is it technical training or...? or? It, so actually, the, uh, the candidate for the program has to be at least 10% disabled. Uh, there's some other qualifying conditions, but uh, predicated on that they meet all those conditions, uh, then um, they can be trained in pretty much any career path they want, even educational as well. The real bottom school. line to this is, Reg, for all the people that have reached out to us saying, hey, I need help, they haven't heard of the different federal organizations and, mm -hmm. and pools of money that are already set up for them. So we've been finding a lot of sex success just uh, really uh, grasping arms with people that are already in service. Very good. And I guess you're right. There probably are many organizations out there that are all kind of trying to help everybody in their own way, um, all of which is maybe focused more or less to a specific branch of the military. Mm -hmm. But there's not anyone that kind of brings it all together and, and kind of helps people find which one's the best for them. Well, I guess that's where the name master comes from. Well, and that's, uh, that's where we come in. Yeah, our, our master council is based on the fact that uh, we bring in organizations as a hub of resources. Uh, we don't have to recreate the wheel for everything, but uh, we can help people along and find the right path that they need. Right, and so it's maybe one day pre-crisis coordination for a family. Then it's getting the GI Bill into one of the universities downtown. Mm -hmm. And then maybe three years later, it's looking for some internship or employment opportunities. So it's not a one-time thing. I mean, somebody comes to you for help, you, you just don't help them and say bye. 
you, you actually can help them for a whole period of time. Yeah, our counsel would stick with them and we do a lot of follow through as well. We want to make sure that, um, you know, whatever route that we recommended was actually effective as opposed to, you know, they went to it, they fell off, and then they disappear. And we're not recommending somebody, hey, go talk to this veteran organization. It's go talk to this person who deals with this issue at this, at, and then get back to us to tell us how it went. Actually, you know, I, I've been working with you guys and known you guys, I guess, for about six or nine months now, maybe a little longer. But you, you've developed over that short period of time a very extensive network. I mean, you know a lot of different organizations, agencies, individuals out there uh, that you are a great resource just between the two of you. Yeah, uh, you know, part of uh, how we initially got started was uh, literally just through uh, guerrilla campaigning. Uh, we went out there, uh, we hosted meetings, um, you know, we reached out to plenty of different organizations and um, every mover and shaker in the community, uh, such as yourself. Well, yeah, I read just from you, and I won't be able to list all of our just deep mentors, but whether it's the Military uh, Affairs Committee, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce, whether it's been Mr. Livingston through the Rotary and all his organizations, Dennis Kwok with the Veteran Business Outreach Center, there's a community here that really wants success and wants uh, a great environment for its veterans. It just seems like there might be one piece missing, and that's somebody to uh, corral them all together. Right, and you know, I think there's a lot of, on the civilian side of people that are former military or, or veterans uh, that have formed this, this group of support. Uh, what we need to be able to do is, is try to get into the different commands and make these individuals, uh, I guess, you know, connect the dots. You know, just make sure that everybody in all the different commands around the state understand that there's these resources out there and, and have them engage and help with that transition. And that's our next phase, really. It's once we've got some consolidated support from the community where we can go to the military chain of commands and say, this is worth it. You have a body of consolidated support whether it be from the state house, private organizations, to nonprofits, then that's when I think um, and we're really ready for it. So it's going to be exciting. Now, I'm going to ask kind of a, a peripheral question here that's related to employment, but you know, Hawaii has always been looking for a way to quote unquote diversify their economy, and we've looked at different um, opportunities in that area, and, and one of them is technology and innovation. Um, that sort of thing, uh, and a lot of it is based out at the uh, University of Hawaii and uh, the Manoa Technology Center. Um, what percentage do you think of the military have computer skills these days? Oh, that's a that's a difficult thing to to say, but. Um you know, I mean, I would imagine that, uh, you know, just in the Signal Corps alone, you know, comprises at least, you know, maybe about 5 to 10 percent of uh, the transitioning community. Um, you know, experts. Yeah, and I'm talking about, uh, you know, people that are, are considered experts. You know, they've had certifications, you know, above, um, for those that have a tech background out there, above Security Plus. Um, you know, we do see it, and there is actually, there, there is a uh, rising demand in, um, in information technology and uh, management. Um, and, you know, there is also a rising amount of uh, people that have those skills um, that each year. Yeah, and there's a lot of folks that are in the military that have to be able to multitask and be generalists and mm -hmm. teach yourself everything about, you know, not just Microsoft Suite, but uh, project management tools to run an operation. And so, uh, reg to, you know, 30, 40 percent of folks who are, are, are very, very capable at, you know, everything. Right, I was just going to say that it's, you know, in today's world of technology, I mean, everybody's got some level of understanding of, of technology and utilizes it uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of computers. And I, you know, I'm a former Navy guy, and I go on a, a ship. The whole ship is computerized. Yeah. Everything is connected. Absolutely. Well, you know, we, we do have a, a rising uh, generation of uh, the digital uh, natives, um, you know, those that are uh, born and bred into the uh, electronic devices that you know, they've probably been playing with since they were three years old in some regard or another. Uh, so, you know, we do absolutely see a baseline out there for, um, you know, a tech uh, capability. Well, and that's kind of where I was headed with this, is that, you know, if there's any company at all in Hawaii that's l looking for somebody that's got some technical skills in the, in the, the technical computer area, um, they should certainly as an, one of their options, take a look at what the military has to offer because there's some good skill set there. Well, absolutely, Reg. And, uh, most major corporations on Hawaii need folks that are experts or semi-experts in um, information technology. I know Blue Startups does great work uh, as a startup incubator, and I've been to a few of their outreach nights, and very frequently they're looking for programmers or people with computer skills from all these startups. And so um, 
Another one is, and it's a startup here in Hawaii, is Patriotic Online Marketplace. And it sort of blends what we were talking about because it's an e-commerce space for veterans and military families to sell to America. And so that's um, really headquartered here in Hawaii, and we've got a remote team. And, um, yeah, we're, and that's growing here at yeah, PompUSA.org. So, but that's a good example of the type of company that the individuals, the veterans, can set up and operate in Hawaii. Is this online uh, service available to military personnel around the country? Right. I mean, and that's exactly the type of industry that Hawaii is looking for. You know, and kind of connecting the dots, um, you know, we talked a, a little bit about uh, growing the economy here. Uh, we do see a uh, enormous, uh, you know, push to um, make Hawaii more service uh, or technology driven. So, um, you know, these companies like Blue Startups are uh, helping incubate and create um, potentially new spin-off industries uh, through uh, veterans that, you know, want to become an entrepreneur. And my state senator, Senator uh, De La Cruz out in Wahiwa, he's really pushing um, agricultural and technology integration. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, you know, an e-commerce marketplace or whether it's ag tech, it's definitely happening here and it's growing and folks like Chanel at Blue Startups have really helped push that as well. Well, and that's good. And let me let me just ask you another question here. It's kind of peripheral, but I mean, you guys have, have had some good success at, at creating this thing, getting up and running. You're both vets. Um, you're both transitioning out, and one's a little bit ahead of the other. And and but, what are some of the challenges that you guys have personally encountered? I mean, what is I mean, just as advice to the people, the military that are going through it right now. You know, the the, the big things that we see, um, you know, everyone has a hold up with is uh, actually the cost of living. Um, you know, geographical distance. You know, to family. Uh, then the uh, the cultural impact of making the transitioning out and going into the Hawaiian community. Um, I would uh, tell those uh, that are uh, planning on doing it or, um, you know, have an inkling that they might want to stay here in Hawaii is uh, just fear not. Uh, it's actually um, completely sustainable. There are jobs here that are available for them. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, the Hawaiian culture, I mean, it's, it's paradise here. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful place to live and there's plenty of opportunity. And, you know, to side up along with that, Reg, um, there, it is a different culture and I'm still learning things, right? And I imagine I will continue to learn things for the next couple decades. But it's uh, really getting out and immersing yourself, right? Um, thankfully, my wife, Samantha, they started working at Medigold Dairy, and they you know, wrapped their arms around her and helped her and said, hey, listen, like, this, is, this is how we do things here and not in New York City. And I'm frankly glad for some of the ways we do business here. It's like it's friendship first. It's aloha first. It's refreshing. It's yeah. refreshing. Mm -hmm. But that's not the same as where everyone else is from. And so uh, whether it's you know, joining these civic organizations, that's where we feel there's a lot of success to happen. Um, and then joining sports teams. I decided I was going to stay in Hawaii after coaching middle school football. I just said this is where I want to be. Super. Very good. Well, uh, I, for one, welcome you and, and glad that you guys decided to stick around. And, and I think it, it's a great um, project to have to try to figure out how we can tap into this very valuable resource that, that sometimes we forget is sitting there. Um, but we got to wrap up the show. Uh, I want to thank you both very much for being on, in, on the show again. Um, and maybe in a few months we'll have you come back and give us another update and you can tell us about all the different people that you've been able to help over the, the, right on. the few yeah, months. Glad sure. to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 and we discuss uh, success stories in Hawaii of businesses, individuals, and organizations that help uh, individuals and businesses to success. Uh, until next Thursday, aloha.